So, I thought today we'd do a little video rating Jack Kerouac's books, or at least the ones I've read. And before we start, this is the little guy that I've been looking after for the past week or so. He's come around to stay for a little bit, but yeah, I don't know if you can see him anymore, but there he is. So we're going to talk about Jack Kerouac's books. And Jack Kerouac, of course, is a writer famous within a movement in America called the Beat Generation, which was a literary movement in about the 1950s, which was kind of responsible for a lot of openness and freeness in society and an attempt to find meaning and combat existentialism and nihilism often through things like drugs and sex and alcohol but also just deeply through philosophy and Eastern philosophy and Buddhism and things like that. So definitely a very interesting literary group. Also in there is people like Allen Ginsberg, Ferlinghetti, uh, Burroughs, Jack, uh, Bukowski, people like that. Anyway, very interesting literary movement. There he is. He's lied down, finally. He's a bit of an anxious dog. He barks a lot, so there might be a cut in the video. But we're going to start from the bottom of the list, and we're going to work our way up. And I've read seven books by Kerouac, and the seventh, and by no means are any of these bad books, but the seventh is The Town and the City, which was an interesting book, but it just didn't really do it for me. Compared to a lot of Kerouac's other books, this one's much more autobiographical. I mean, they're all autobiographical, but this one is innately so. It's about his childhood, his early life, moving into college and school and things like that. And I don't know. I just, I don't find books like that particularly interesting. I remember Bukowski also wrote a similar book. It was called Ham on Rye. And that one I preferred for some reason. I'm not sure why, but maybe because it had more rawness to it. But The Town and the City was never a book that particularly spoke to me. It was about a young Kerouac playing football and growing up in the American college system and basically dropping out of that college. But it was a good book nonetheless. Then number six we have The Subterraneans. And this is an interesting novel, or novella more specifically. It's a very short book. It covers a period of about three days within New York where this man falls in love with a woman and they do a lot of very beat stuff. It's a very classically beat books so or they go and they do a lot of drugs and have sex and go to parties and listen to jazz music and I don't know it sounds good when I describe it but in a way again there was something missing I think the time frame that it was over was kind of too short to grasp anything from it I think unlike some of Kerouac's other literature it, it missed out on the philosophy that I loved him for so much my view of Kerouac's writing never is that his stories are particularly moving or great. I mean, On the Road, in its essence, is a story about two men driving across the country. But what the Subterraneans lacks that, that, books, that those books don't is that kind of sense of philosophy, a search for meaning, a search for it. And it has it, but in much less of an overt way than those other books do. So, by all means, a good book, but probably not a very Kerouac-y book, if that makes any sense. Then number five, we have what is a very kerouac -y book. It's a very experimental novel that he wrote called The Visions of Cody. And it's a good book. This is, now we're moving into the territory of books I would actually recommend to people to read. And The Visions of Cody is, so Cody is in real life, is this character called Neil Cassidy. And he appears in other books, like on the road, he appears as Neil Cassidy, sorry, as um, Dean Moriarty, there we go. In the Dharma Bonds, he's also there as another character who I've forgotten the name of, but anyway. But in the Visions of Cody, oh, he appears as Cody in the Dharma Bonds, there you go, clearly the name. But yeah, so in the Visions of Cody, it's a kind of transcription of a lot of different interviews Jack Kerouac and Neil Cassidy did, essentially while they were off their face on Benzedrine and different stimulant drugs. So they'd sit up all night until seven in the morning talking pure and utter shit. And a lot of it was deeply philosophical and other things like that. And then the second half of the book he goes more into the classical Kerouac style of spontaneous prose and storytelling. It is a good book though. It's an interesting book. My one qualm with it, the reason why it's lower down on the list than the other ones, is because because of the nature of the book, because of its experimental nature, it is disjointed. And that's just an unfortunate truth of it. So. The interviews that they have, obviously because they're fucking off their faces, they don't have much structure to them, much context to them. It flits very quickly between meaninglessness and profoundness and 
It's a very odd mixture of writing. But nonetheless, it is a good book. And then next, number four, we have what Jack Kerouac considered to be his masterpiece. So his favourite book. And it is a great book. And it's number four purely because the three above it, I think, are also fantastic. Big Sur is the book. And it is a fantastic, fantastic book. It chronicles Jack Kerouac's later life. So when he was moving more towards this kind of depressive stages, he was developing things like cirrhosis, which eventually would end up killing him. And he wrote this book deep in these pangs of depression, and the book is very much like that. It's written about Big Sur, a place in California, a beach, and, and it is deeply sad. It's about a man coming to terms with the meaninglessness of existence, a man coming to terms with perhaps a failed career, at least in his eyes, as a writer, at least while he was alive. It's a story of a man battling with things like alcoholism and the contrast of that and this deep spirituality that he became so known for, especially inside of his movement. Big Sur is a poetic book. I mean, the, the end 20 or 30 pages are a poem. It's a deeply profound and beautiful book. Also a very short book, too. I don't really have much negative to say about it. I mean, the one thing I... And not criticise the book for, it's not a criticism in any way, but the one thing that I personally prefer in books is... Let me get Doc again. His name's Doc, by the way. Oh, good boy. Is I prefer an optimistic view on life. That is just... I don't know, that's a part of literature that I enjoy. A lot of... The thing is, is I read literature a lot more for the philosophy of it than the story, in a way. So I've never been particularly drawn to books with good stories. And that's not to say that Big Sur is just a book of story. It's actually probably less plot than a lot of his other ones. But it's lacking in that kind of philosophical optimism that I like in a book. It's lacking on the kind of, not the answer per se, but hope. I think the problem with Big Sur for me was that in a way it was too depressing. It was a view of just how terrible a life is. It was a book of pure and utter desolation and suffering, which is never an inspiring book to read, I guess is my point, especially when maybe, maybe we as people, certain individuals at least, might relate to this character. And so it's always slightly disheartening to read, but nonetheless a very good book and you should definitely give it a read. Then number three we have Desolation Angels, which I debated putting as number one to be honest. It's and I, I didn't, and I'll talk about that, I'll talk about why. But the book is profound. So it's, it's a sequel to the Dharma Bums. So the basic kind of trilogy goes on the road, the Dharma Bums and Desolation Angels. So you can kind of see now which ones are going to be number one and two. But Desolation Angels is the third book in that kind of trilogy. And it chronicles the tale of Jack Kerouac spending, I think it was two or three months at the top of a hill called Desolation and he was working as a fire lookout for the, um, the American Fire Service. And while he was up there, he spent a lot of time completely solitary, very alone, and he wrote about different things that he'd experienced. I mean, the book, at least in its first half, is deeply Buddhist, it's deeply profound. He speaks a lot about the existence of the universe, these dualistic ideas that Buddhism has. It's a very deep and profoundly spiritual book. Now, the reason why I didn't put it higher is, so I, I love that first half. If the book was just that first half, those 200 pages, then I probably would have put it as the number one on my list. The way it's written, in, it's written more as a diary than it is a book. Each account, each chapter is like a page long of just thoughts and opinions from the day and then moving on to the next one, but so cleverly written to intertwine all of these things and still have some semblance of flow and plot. It's a fantastic book. And then the second half of the book, he moves back down to the city and he struggles once again, which is a common theme in Kerouac's literature, with the battle between that spirituality and between living a hedonistic lifestyle inside of this beat generation. That's not to say the second half of the book is bad. It's just to say that it's long. <laughs> it's long. And... I don't have anything inherently against long books. Books like Les Miserables, 1,200 pages, I was engaged almost the entire way through. But The Desolation Angel strikes me more of a kind of crime and punishment-esque length of a novel, where he talks a lot for a lot of pages, and you kind of get the idea that 
more so than anything, it just isn't a very concise novel. Like, he could have said a lot of what he was trying to say, especially in the second half of that book, much more easily and much shorter. So that would be my one criticism of the book. But again, this is number three, so it's a fantastic book as it is. And basically all of these books I recommend, but that one is great. Then, number two we have On the Road. And again, this is strange, because for so many people, On the Road is is their kind of gateway drug into Kerouac. And it was for me as well. It was my first book by Kerouac that I read. And I loved it, and I still do love it. It's the book I've read the most times. Probably like eight or nine now. Wait, Doc, you stop growling. But yeah, no, it's a, it's a brilliant book. But what's interesting, and I think not enough people know this about the book, is that Kerouac actually didn't like On the Road. And you can see why when you read other novels of his. It's because the philosophy that he propounds is, uh, is that even a word? I'm not sure. The prophecy, sorry, the philosophy that he talks about is in a way inconsistent or at least misunderstood in comparison to the other philosophies that he talks about. And I say that because it's more so focused on the hedonism and the drugs and the sex than almost any of his other books, in a way glorifying and romanticising those things, which he moves away from, for sure, in later novels. By the way, this is not dog abuse, I'm just holding him because he fucking barks like shit if you don't. But yeah, so, interesting book. But yeah, he didn't like it because people focused on those things. I mean, at its core, the book is philosophical. The book is about the search for meaning. It's about two characters who go forwards and backwards across America searching for it, it in capital letters. And they go back and forth and they search for this thing. But what so many people focus on, in fact, is the hedonism of it all. It's the partying, it's the music, it's the sex, it's the drugs. And the Kerouac had people banging on his door and coming in to talk to them, and he writes about that in books like the Dharma Bombs, and they come and they bang on his door and they say, let's go party, let's go do this and that, because they misunderstood the purpose of the novel. Right, Ducky, you all right? But a great book nonetheless. I mean, like I say, I prefer it more so because of the spirituality of it. I think it's a great book because of those things, because of the glorification of them, but also because at its core, it's not an endorsement of that way of living. What so many people forget when they read on the road and they kind of idolise this sex and drugs, and this is a bit of a spoiler, but it doesn't end well. At the end of the day, Jack Kerouac ends up with fucking diphtheria in a little shack in Mexico, and Neil Cassidy, a few years later, ends up dead. It's not an endorsement of that way of living. And that is, I think, the bit that people miss with On the Road. On the Road is a book about philosophy. It's a book about search for meaning and why that's important compared to just hedonism. Anyway, now we have my favourite book by Kerouac, and it's a book we've spoken about, I think, twice before now on this channel. It's a deeply spiritual book, so it's a, it's a big shift from On the Road, for example, because it focuses more so on the spirituality of it all. It's, it's the Dharma Bonds by Kerouac, and it, it tells his story when he moves after On the Road to California and meets up with this guy called Gary Snyder. In the book he's called Jaffe Ryder, and we've made videos specifically on Jaffe's character. And he talks about Buddhism, basically. It's a book on Buddhism. If you know what the Dharma is, the Dharma is the Buddhist teaching, it's the truth. And he goes through this book explaining a lot of these things to a lot of different people who don't fully understand, while also struggling and kind of moving on with his own journey of enlightenment and spiritual growth. It's a good book. It came to me in a period of my life when I was very into Buddhism myself, so it was a book I related to a lot the first time I read it, and it's perhaps why I love it so much. But the reasons why I love the book so much are, number one, that aspect of it. But number two, Jaffe Ryder. So the character that Kerouac focuses on. Now Kerouac is interesting, and you'll see this in a lot of his books, but he He's more of an observer than he is a first-person author. Most of his books, so On the Road is a focus on Dean Moriarty. The Visions of Cody is a book that focuses more so on Cody. What Kerouac does is he creates inhuman atmospheres and from them he pulls beautiful characters, like Dean Moriarty, like Jaffe Ryder, for example. Which perhaps is why I didn't like Desolation Angels as much, a book where there's just Kerouac by himself. 
But anyway, so Jaffe Ryder is just this gargantuan character. He's the most amazing character. I mean, he's probably in my top three literary characters along with Zorba the Greek and I'm not sure, maybe the bishop from Les Mis. He's a great guy too. But Jaffe Ryder is huge. He's this, um, this Buddhist author and poet who's still writing today, actually. He's called Gary Snyder. I already said that, but yeah. And he's fantastic. We made a video on him. He lives this life of minimalism and essentialism and, and soul and passion and purpose and education. He's constantly learning and giving back to the world and he's compassionate and giving and kind. And to me, he's the epitome of what a good man is. And I think in this generation and this society of masculinity and this idea of macho-ness, Jaffe Ryder stands out as a beacon of hope and goodness inside of all of that because he is so much more of a man than any of these people that we currently profess masculinity on. He's deeply kind and giving and warm and open and he walks down the street and says hi to people and waves and shouts and he's not stoic in the kind of modern conception of the way a character like Tommy Shelby, for example, who so many people idolise in this day and age. He's a kind man and a beautiful soul and he's dedicated to passion and learning and Buddhism, essentially, to the Dharma. And that's why it's a profound novel. But anyway, like I say, any of those books I recommend deeply. I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend you read them in the order I taught them. So that's where the caveat comes in this video. I would still say, read On the Road first, then read The Dharma Bums, then Desolation Angels. And if you're still into Kerouac by all of that, go on to Big Sur, The Visions of Cody, Subterraneans, The Town and the City. But yeah, that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed that video. Doc is sleeping, so I'm not going to pick him up again. But... I hope you gained any value from that, and if you did, drop a subscribe, or come and chat to me on the Discord, or give me a call. The links for both of those are in the description. And yeah, I'll see you tomorrow, brother. Manifest excellence. Goodbye.